Welcome to Ingle Farm Salvos. We're so glad that you can join us today. There are a fair few of us who have been meeting in life groups uh, on Zoom for most of this season and some of us are starting to meet in person. But a few weeks ago, we looked in our life groups together around this idea of uh, gratitude and thankfulness. And I was reminded of a psalm we looked at in our life groups. And I, I want to start worship today in this way by reading Psalm 100. I'm going to read from the message paraphrase. And it says this, On your feet now applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this, God is God. And God is God. He made us, we didn't make him. We're his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Thank him, worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever. I hope that's a reminder of how good our God is, but also an encouragement that as we worship together today, that we would enter by saying thank you. We are so grateful for who God is, for what he has done. So let's enter in with, with kind of open hearts, rejoicing and praising and giving thanks to our God because he is good. Again, we're glad that you've joined us. Let's worship together. nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare your living hope your presence Lord I've tasted and seen the sweetest of lives where my heart becomes free and my shame is Your glory, God. 
Thanks for joining with us. We're really excited as we continue in our series on stay positive, positive people who, who live with a positive attitude, who live grateful, who live to be encouraging. And today we're going to look at what does it mean for us to live generous, to live generous as people of God. And I, we want to start by, by reading from 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 6 to 11. And it says this from the NLT translation. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures share, as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seeds for the farmer and then the bread to eat it. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So we uh, have some guests here with us today. Uh, we're not so much guests. We're part of the, the Ingle Farm Salvation Army family here. And uh, we're grateful to be here with you in this time. But we have with us John Ewan, who is the Director of Finance for Ingle Farm Salvos and uh, has had that role for a number of years, just a few years, over 40 years. That's correct. You don't look yes. a day over 21, John. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, right. Um, that's, uh, I guess, your involvement here in terms of, you know, your role and position, uh, but also you're here because you're a generous man, John, and uh, that's why Thank you're you. here behind this table. Uh, and, and our good friend Fatima, who is also here with us, who also displays incredible generosity in the way that she lives and the way that she loves this community. And so we're grateful to have you here with us today. But when I think about generosity, uh, there's a whole lot of um, conflicting thoughts and myths or unique theology around the matter. And I'm sure out there, wherever you're watching this, you've probably heard um, a whole range of dif differing opinions and perspectives on generosity, especially when it comes to things like tithing um, and you know use of money. Um, things like, you know, if I'm generous with money, will I get more money in return? Or if I'm generous with my time, will God honor that more so in heaven? If I'm generous with my words, will people think more highly of me or, you know, will I be a better Christian? Um, when we think of generosity, many, uh, as I said, think of tithes, uh, tithes and offerings, um, that it is limited to being a, you know, a religious practice or a duty. But I believe uh, that as we unpack the Word of God, it is so much more than a religious act. 
but rather it is who God is. Our God is generous in nature. It's who he is. Uh, we, we can't, you know, when, when we think of generosity, we can't look much further than God, right, that, that he himself is, is generous for God so loved the world. He loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only son that our God, he gives and he gives and gives again. Uh, our God is generous and out of the overflow of God's heart, we, uh, we, we get to live generously. I'm reminded that generosity is love in action, that generosity is love in action, that you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving, that you can give without loving. You know, people give all the time, just, yeah, whatever, I'll just give that away. But there's no way that you can love without giving. It comes with a cost of giving. So as we look at this thought around generosity, I wanted to share, uh, open up a space where we could kind of talk that through together. And uh, we've got some questions that we'd love to chat through. Whoever wants to jump in first, that's okay. But I want to start with this question, what does generosity mean to you and what makes a person generous? What does generosity mean to you and what makes a person generous? Good question. I suppose it depends a little bit on your upbringing to a certain extent. Um, my parents were Salvation Army officers and obviously didn't have too much, but they were very generous and probably in the first, um, my more mature years, I figured that the uh, tithing was, was what was necessary. Um, and I used to have a bit of a worksheet and work out that 10% was what I would give um, and uh, but then as time developed 10% became very much a minimum um, and I don't cal <laughs> calculate it anymore no, I haven't for years uh, and so you just give uh, and it's certainly from biblical teachings yeah. and training and all that, not so much um, to see the, be I, I don't know that I've um, focused it on seeing the benefit of giving, but it's really just a matter of you've got to give. Yes. Mm. That's great. How about for you, Fatima? It's, for me, it's, I never think about myself seriously, mm. generous, it's uh, we have to do everything good when God generous to everyone mm. and why we can't do anything. Yeah. For that reason, when, when I wake up every day and I saw, oh, okay, I wake up today and I have to do a lot of things if I can for someone. I think when I generous to everyone or some something else, and I'm so happy, I'm so proud. I generous to in my life, and makes me so happy. Generous is mean that for me. Yeah, it's great. I think Fatima touched on something really important is actually God has first been generous towards mm. us. Yes. And so actually we're not we're not the ones who are first generous. Actually that is yes. that is God who is first generous yes. to, uh, exactly. to us. We we see that in creation and how he's created the world and the the marvel and the beauty that is yeah. within us for us to actually enjoy to us yeah. for us to enjoy and then we see the generous nature again and how he provides how he 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 sent his son how he gave his son for us. Yes. It's just again and again you read throughout the Bible the generous nature of God and, and it comes back to that that moment of, well, how can I not be generous then in return in my life? Mm. Because yeah. we've experienced the generosity yeah. of God. Actually, I think it's our natural reaction is we want to then be generous towards yeah. others. That's that's where it comes back to. Yes, mm. exactly. So. I guess why do, why do you think it's important for Christians to be generous? I guess it's kind of tied up in that, right? That, you know, obviously God is, you know, he's being generous towards us first. It's out of that overflow, I guess. But, you know, why, why is it important that we as Christians are generous? Show love. Show yeah. love, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's that love in action. It's, mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think of that. 
that passage in, in Matthew as well where Jesus is speaking and he, and he uh, says, you know, what, what you did for, for my brother and sister in need, you did for me actually yeah. when, you, when you fed them, when you clothed them, when you um, gave them water to drink, actually that, that you did for them, you did that for me. It's a, it's a love. It's a, it's a generosity because actually we love God and, and we want to we serve him and this is a way whether it's through um, financial means or through practical means or time or, or energy or, or generous in our, in our words, mm. that's, that's where it comes back to. Yeah. A uh, um, bunch of years ago we were cottage parents at a children's home for five years mm. and um, we just did it because there was a need and we did it and the whole family was involved whether they liked it or not. Yeah. Um, and I was quite surprised when the officer at the time, when we finished up with that, he gave me a little, or gave us a plaque, which was those words. Um, and it sort of all of a sudden came to me that, well, maybe that's what, that's what we were doing. Yeah. Whereas it was just part of, part of life at that stage. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that it can be so simple, right? Like we don't have to mm. overcomplicate no, generosity, no, do we? No. It's, that's out of the overflow of what God has done in us that lives out of us. Um, I guess you could say it's an act of worship, isn't it? Mm. That uh, bringing our best before God and God, here it is. I surrender it to you. I think uh, Ingle Farm Salvation Army is incredibly generous uh, in so many ways in terms of you know finances, in terms of time. In terms of its words of uh, you know generous with words that's a it's a dna it's a, it's a part mm -hmm. of ingle farm salvation army yeah. and um john i know you've been a part of this this church for a long time over 40 years um and you've had you know quite a critical role in the core and i think actually been keen developing that dna and that culture in, the, in this place mm, definitely where, where, where does that come from? Like, you know, like, have you got examples of what that's looked like over the years in terms of generosity? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 it was interesting right at the start um, when I was asked to be what was called treasurer back then in, at Prospect um, that I, uh, one thing I wasn't up for was collecting at the shops and <laughs> collecting at the football and all of those sort of things, which... My father had done and mother had done and the treasurer of the time uh, or previous to that um, old um, Mr Brimblecombe was was the treasurer and he did that sort of stuff but I was very clear to the officer who appointed me uh, which was Alan Stephen actually um, uh, sorry Alan's dad um, uh, and um, I was fairly clear to him at the time that that wasn't my the way I saw it, yeah. um, it was more a bigger picture thing and it should be, uh, I can use the skills that I've been given and um, we would make sure that the, the money was there and we would have, have things, we would work with government, we'd work with the community, we'd work with all sorts of people to make sure that we had sufficient money to... Uh, um, to uh, to make the outreach possible and yes. all of that possible and um, that that was the way we started off and then we moved here and we had you know, huge issues in relation to buildings and all the rest of it but um, uh, then one of the employees at the time um, Tony Rogers mentioned to ask me about the uh, you know what what do we do how did what happens to our money. And I said, who do, who do we pay it to and whatever. So we explained some of those things. But I also said that we pay a 10% tithe to the division. Mm. Um, and uh, that was fine. He said, well, that's, that's almost a bill. It's not, it's not, it's not obligatory. Like, it is obligatory. You, yeah. you, you can't do anything about that. And uh, so we put in place um, a, a core tithe account. So 10% of our giving was put aside and we allocated that to um, various um, um, things which were which were outside yeah. the normal operation of the core, yeah. and um, that went on for many years. And 
took a, I'm anxious to get back to yeah, that sort of situation yeah. now so that we yeah. can do that. Unfortunately, it fell in a heap a little while ago when um, money was uh, was um, a bit sus in terms of what we were what we had available to us, mm -hmm. and uh, I always have problems at budget time um, where we're looking at figures and the hierarchy sort of says, well, you've got to have a balanced budget, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Or I say, well, where's your faith in that? You've got to have faith in yeah, that. And sure. unfortunately, I didn't win, but, um, you know, we're still able to do things. Yeah. And the reason that Ingle Farm is what Ingle Farm is today sure. is that we've had faith to do things yeah. and we go ahead and do them. Yeah. I guess on that too, how, how could that translate? To somebody out there today you know i think about maybe a 35 year old parent out there you know there's that because that tithing principle you know the, obviously kind of the original 10 percent, which is just a given mm -hmm. but then above that ingle farms and that other 10 percent. like is there is there measures that people could put in place in their own personal walk that would well i, I think starting point is is the 10 percent. i yeah. mean if you can allocate yeah. them that doesn't mean it all goes to salvation army or whatever yeah. you just allocate you put it in your little pot mm -hmm. wherever you are and that's your 10 percent and then you can do with that um as you're led to to do with that yeah um fortunately over the years i've been able as i said before able to go well past that because I, my needs are not all that yeah. great and um i i'm out I, i've god's been good to me over the years and i've been very um you know, I've, I've I've never been, I've never had excess, but yes. I've always had enough to do what I wanted to do. If I wanted to have a holiday, somehow okay. or other, I did it. If I wanted to do this, if the kids needed that, um, you know, they went to private school, which was a which was a thing yeah. that I was given yeah. from with Salvation Army officers, yeah. um, because they they were told that when I went to high school, if I didn't go to a private school, I'd be a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still a disaster, but. Um, <laughs> So, you know, they're the things that, that, that and, and I've really just noticed over the years the fact that I've never had a, a bunch of money available, but I've always had been able to meet my needs, yes. always, and, and the needs of other people that I've been supporting. That's good. That's good. Some good wisdom there. Fatima, I want to ask you, in terms of generosity, what impact has generosity had on your life? I know you've got an incredible story, an incredible story uh, of how you arrived here in Australia and uh, you, in some ways left everything to find yeah. freedom here in Australia, right? And uh, we're so glad that you are here. Thank you. And we praise <laughs> God for that. Thanks. But in terms of the impact that generosity has had on your life, what, what would you say that impact has been? I've got many things to say yeah but more than john john he's <laughs> in, he can speak perfect english you're perfect but is all right mine not <laughs> that's good i want to say a short story about mm. for example the yeah. generosity when i when i'm generous it's nothing for god this is nothing for god but in my life when i do this job, I want to say something. For example, one night when my son, he come back home and I heard the big noise and it was the big truck in front of my house. And I saw, oh my goodness, his tire is like that. Mm -hmm. And his car was completely smashed. Wow. And I wanted just to see my son face or where is my son? And I saw my son, he said, hi, mom, how are you? I said, are you okay? Your car is completely smashed or you had a big accident? He said, yes, I'm okay. He drove to the Elizabeth. That time he did the pizza delivery. And he drove his car and it was raining. And when he tried to uh, stop his car and it doesn't uh, uh, stop and escape on the between of the two 
it's an electricity mm -hmm. one what's the name of that yeah. the study problem yeah. yes just he draw a between of that yeah. and he uh, had a bad accident between of that road and I said thanks God mm -hmm. I know this generous is very important for me I'm so happy when I do these things God always mm -hmm. care of my kids or look after mm -hmm. me always the other things on uh, Wednesday when I made my soup mm -hmm. And it's good soup. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I was writing behind the paper mm. in Persian. God, please help me. God, I'm talking to you. <laughs> please. Yeah. I need job. I need yeah. money. Yeah. You can hear me. Please listen to me. And it was a big line and I wrote it. Please help me care of me. And in the afternoon when I went to Inger Farm Shopping Center, when I bought the coffee, I asked, are you hiring anyone? He said, yes, uh, we are not, we are hiring. <laughs> Can you make coffee? I said, yes, I'm making coffee. He said, okay, welcome. <laughs> Generous is mean yeah. for me. This is huge generous to God or to give it to me. It's a big present to mm. me. Mm. Love that. Thanks. Beautiful. God is incredibly generous to us. And generous in so many ways. It's not just right. generosity of finances. Yeah. Actually, it's a, the provision of a job when yeah. it yes. was needed most. It was the the always having enough for for what was required in, in our lives. It's the generosity in so many different ways. Yeah. Yes. It's incredible. I think about generosity. Um, there's fruits in giving. There's fruits in being generous. The giving produces greater contentment in life. I think that as we're generous to others, we feel more content in our own life. That you know, many have said that the secret to a happy life is not having all you want, but but wanting what you have. Uh, there's a bit of a shift in in our, in our lens and the way we view life. That Paul says it this way: that godliness with contentment is great gain. That the greatest gain is contentment. That um, as we're generous towards other others that we find contentment you know as we as we see how ge generous god is to us that we find ourselves content with what we have which is kind of it's conflicting right when we look at the world around us that it's always just like i want more i want more i want more this instant gratification but actually as christians the way that as generous people that we're to find contentment in what god has given us absolutely i hear that in both your stories um that yeah giving produces great contentment uh, giving increases your love for the kingdom of God. Uh, putting your treasure in a place actually makes you begin to love that place more. So, for example, if you're you know if you're to invest money in a football team, right, you be, you become a member, you're going to love that team a whole lot more, right? Mm. Up the bunnies, <laughs> but if you're going to invest in a team, you're going to you're going to love that team a bit more, a lot more. You're you're invested in it uh, because when you're giving uh, money every year to somewhere, your heart goes with it. And Jesus said, "Where your treasure is." that your heart will be also. You know, I see that in your stories as well. You know, As you give your time, your, your finances into the kingdom of God, into his church, there your heart goes also, right? It's you, you, your treasure is there. Your heart is there. Um, the other fruit is that you know, giving clarifies your purpose. So I've spoken to a number of people in their 50s and 60s, kind of in that bracket, John, almost. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> who said that you know, they spent uh, the first part of their life, you know, trying to gather and save. You often hear of stories like that, right, where, you know, people as they get older, they've spent all their life trying to gather and save. And they always thought that they were doing it for their kids. But as they uh, then begin to reflect on their legacy, they realize that it feels empty. But it's only when they begin to give sacrificially, not just, you know, hoarding it up and saving it, saving it, saving it for a rainy day or for something else, but they sacrificially give that they begin to discover a real sense of purpose and legacy in life. I love that. It's that open-handed generosity, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's, God, what's mine is is yours, God. My time, my talents, my, my finances. And that the fourth fruit is that giving produces a more loving heart. Stinginess sh shrinks your heart. It breeds isolation. But giving opens you up. And an open heart is a much happier heart. 
most of us think that uh, I guess generosity is something that God wants from us, but according to Paul, it's, it's something He wants for us. That those four fruits are just some of the things that God makes you abound in when you are when you are generous. We're called to be a generous people and we see that in your lives so we celebrate you today for the way that you live and give generously is there any any encouragement that you'd love to give to people around generosity is there any i guess lasting words you know you'd love to leave with with our church family with people around the place yeah well i'd certainly back up that story is is it is a very generous place i mean every year mm. um the um, members give over a quarter of a million dollars um, and um, uh, you know that's that's used uh, as strategically as possible yes. and also as generously as possible yes. um, and um, you know we don't look to um, uh, build up resources build up amounts we will always use it um, for the needs of the people as as time goes by you know because of the changes in the way things have happened at Ingle Farm, then okay, we've got a whole different ball game now. But I'm positive about the fact that we will still be yes. successful and we will um, be able to uh, extend God's kingdom Amen. through this place. Amen. Any other encouragement, Fatima, in terms of you know, encouraging people around generosity? <laughs> All good? Yeah, well, good. Yeah, I'm so happy to do that. Yeah, it's it's, it's great that you said that because there is a joy over you, right? Yeah. That, you know, as you live generously. Yes. You know, people see the joy in that. Um, when you yeah. enjoy. Yeah. When you enjoy your generous. Yes. You have a more uh, energy. You can. Yeah. God gives you more energy to do everything. Yes. To work hard and hard for God. Generous is this for me. And I hope everyone they can do that. And I think that's that's a perfect way to to end. Actually it's you using what you have in your hands to be mm. generous with. I, I think you, you mentioned when you first took on the role of treasurer, actually you wanted to be the treasurer with the gifts that God had given mm, you yeah. and use the skill that it wasn't out collecting in a, in a shopping centre or at the football field, but actually you were wise and you had a real clear vision of how we could be a generous yes. church and that's how you utilise what God, had, the mm. skills God had given mm. you and still do to this day actually yeah. that, that's your heart. Um, to, to be that and to help facilitate that within this yeah. space. And for Fatima, actually, you were so generous in your times and your skills towards who, whosoever even walks through our, our church building. And yeah. it's it's this open-handed living with, with what I have in my hands, God, I will be generous yeah. to serve your kingdom and to see your will be done here. And, um, yeah, so we are so thankful for you both, for yeah. the way that you love and serve this community, using what God has, has given you and you were so generous with with that in, in return to uh, this church and, and this community. So thank you both so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Building by the power of your name, for your grace never ends, it overcomes any fold, revealing beauty from ashes. God of restoration, redeemer of the weak, the power.
ashes, you're rising. A people of praise deep in the ruins, rebuilding by the power of your name. For your grace never ends, it overcomes the folds, revealing beauty from ashes. I'm so grateful that we've got to spend this time together and I'd love to, to pray a blessing over us as we go. In thinking about our theme today around, around how we be generous, uh, my thoughts always go back to how generous our God is and how generous our God has been. And, and it made me think of this verse from, from Ephesians 3, 16 to 18. And, and I'd like to pray this as a prayer for us all today. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. It's my prayer for you today. I pray that you go into your week and you become more and more like Jesus this week. See you next week. 
I'm Megan. And I'm Sam. And I'm Mimi. And we're here to bring you church news. We are hoping um, that you have someone over to watch church together this week. We just encourage you, as we can, invite someone over so that we can share church together again. Yeah, and in the meantime, let's watch Rev together. Rev is out every Friday night. Do we like Rev, Evie? Yay! Yay for Rev. Every Friday night, um, get, get on it, get other people on it. It's a good time. We also have a special announcement from our special guests. <laughs> Yeah! Yeah! Everyone should watch JRF Saturday at 3 o'clock. I'm going to clap. Saturday, 3 o'clock. 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 We also have prayer. We'll have a prayer meetings Monday and Wednesday this week. So yeah. join in on Zoom. If you don't know how, please just email reception or send us a Facebook message and we'll get you set up with the login. And as always, we're just reminding you during this time to please um, still continue to give with your tithes and your offering. If you can't do it online, then um, you, <laughs> if you can't do it online, then you can come into church, can't you? Yeah. And you can give there. And remember, our op shops are now open, so come check them out. We have an op shop at the warehouse in yep. Mawson Lakes, Mawson Lakes, Hidden Lakes. Treasure Lakes. with the hate. And what's the other one? Bilby's. 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 So go check them out. There's plenty of bargains there. Bilby's. As restrictions ease, we want you to stay tuned for further announcements about church and what it looks like us coming back together. We can't wait to be get together, united in community. And now for Megan's favourite time of the week. Mission Challenges! The challenge to you, it should be obvious after the message today, is to be generous. How can you be generous, Evie? How do you be generous? Um, <laughs> you could be generous with money. Hug people. You could hug people. Probably not during Corona season. I know. Uh, you can be generous with your time, but also generous with your house and space. We encourage yeah! you. Invite someone over for church this week. Yeah, so invite someone over, do church together. Um, this is us again for another week of church news and we can't wait to be back with you again next week. See you later.